Some time ago I made this aluminium box to hold all my welding bits and pieces. It's got a slide top, little groove in it using the saw. Worked out well, so I thought, hmm, I wonder if I can make a treasure chest type box like the one I made out of timber. So I got out my plans, modified them a bit for the aluminium and then got into it. So just like my wooden box construction, I cut out the pieces, sprayed self-adhesive glue on the back, and then glued them to bits of aluminium. This time was just bits of scrap that was left over from previous projects. It's always nice to find a project that you can use up all those scrap pieces. So with all the planned bits glued to 3mm aluminium, it's time to cut them out. And I'm just going to use the bandsaw, cut along the line of the plan, should work out well. One thing I've found is that aluminium is, aluminium is very sticky, so a little bit of ordinary soap on the blade really helps it cut. first piece cut out. However, cutting it with the bandsaw leaves a reasonably rough edge, which isn't real great for welding. So it's over to the sander to just give it a fine sand to get that edge nice and smooth. The latch requires an inside cut, which is a bit of a pain. I'm just using the scroll saw for this. Doesn't work real well, but I finally get it to look not too bad. The scroll saw is really only any good for timber. I'm planning the hinging to be achieved by putting a 1 16th or a 1.6 mil rod through the 3 mil aluminium. Now this is going to be a bit of a challenge. A tiny drill bit like this just wanders and with the sticky aluminium it's very easy to uh, break a drill off. In fact I broke three drills trying to do all this. At this point after trying to drill for the hinges I really should have said right let's stop and have a rethink but no I just stubbornly went on saying yeah yeah it'll be right. So I ignored the potential disaster and went on with welding the box itself. Just using methylated spirits to um, clean the aluminium off. I find that this works okay so I don't need to use um, acetone. A little bit easier on the hands. The lid of the box is going to be folded around these ends. So to help with the folding process I'm going to just use the angle grinder to cut a bit of a groove so that when the bend happens it doesn't pucker. All the grooves are done, time to take it over to the bender. This bender is bolted onto my uh, small welding table and it was made by my brother and it's proved to be quite useful for bending aluminium or thin steel.
So here we go. It's starting to look good. And with all the bends done, with a little bit of tweaking, I've got the ends ready for welding. I found that the most critical piece of fabrication is getting all the pieces together perfectly, getting them tacked into place. Then just welding all the seams is an easy process. But as TIG welding is a two-handed process, it can be a bit of a problem sometimes getting things in the right place. Having said that, it's very satisfying when things do come together correctly. At this point I need to remind you that I'm just a backyard hobbyist, self-taught, got really no idea what I'm doing, but this is just for fun. So even if the project does turn out to be a complete failure, it really doesn't matter. As I've only got myself to please. So far the project is progressing nicely. This is stuff I've done before, even though I'm not an expert. The welds don't look too bad, but they're all going to be dressed so it really doesn't matter if they're not perfect. Bottom of the box is all welded up and everything's fine. I'm feeling confident. Silly me. The lid's next and this also progresses reasonably well. To get the lid width to match up with the base, I'm just sitting it on top of the base while I do the final tacks on the end before I then weld up all the seams. I'm not a good enough welder to have display type welds, so I'm going to dress all my welds. Just putting a bit of soap on the flap disc, again, helps a lot with grinding the um, aluminium down. I'm just using a 60 grit flap disc for this job. The soap on the flap disc helps to stop the disc getting clogged up with the aluminium. Well, there's the rough dressing done for the base anyway. Okay, now here's where everything goes to poo. I decided in my wisdom that I was going to weld the hinges on. What I should have done is just pop rivet them on. But I didn't want, didn't like the idea of the pop rivets. So I thought, well, you know, I'll weld it on. How hard can it be? Well, it proved to be very hard those little hinges took the heat a lot more than the actual lid or base. I had a huge amount of trouble 
trying to weld the two together. It was like welding very thin to very thick, even though both materials are the same thickness. The volume of the box sucked the heat in, and the hinges just started to melt. This is when I should have stopped and said, right, not doing it this way, but of course, I'm too stupid for that. And this is what I ended up with, a complete dog poo. But did I stop here? No, of course I didn't. I persisted and I welded the latch on as well. And because I'm the sort of person who believes that putting lipstick on a pig makes the pig more attractive, and that polishing a turd really is a good exercise, I keep on going. I try to make the box look pretty by using the random orbital sander with a 120 grit. And this is what it looks like after that. It's slightly better. But those hinges still look disastrous. But no matter. Let's move on to 240 grit. Surely that will make the difference. Well, it made a tiny bit of difference, a tiny improvement. So then I thought, right, let's go onto the buffing wheel. That'll make it look sensational. And no one will be able to see those pooey hinges anymore. It'll be so brilliant and shiny. But after buffing, even though things have improved a little bit, those hinges still look terrible. Ah, now I hear you ask. What are you doing over on the lathe? I thought you were building an aluminium box. Well, what I'm doing is just turning down this end so that it'll fit into my bench drill because I'm going to do a bit of engine turning. I saw a guy on YouTube doing it. It's a weird name for the process. Don't know where it came from, but I thought, hmm, I'll give it a go. Anyway, it's always nice to see the lathe in action. Right, I've got my custom made tool with a nice flat end on it. And I'm going to use a bit of scotch bright to stick on the end of this tool. I've warmed up the steel with um, my heat gun so that when I put the hot glue on the end of it, the hot glue doesn't um, solidify immediately. So it stays nice and sticky until I'm ready to put the tool down onto the scotch bright. So it sticks the scotch bright nicely. This method proved to work really well. So now I can trim the edges to get a somewhat circular pad on the end of the tool. Now I know I'm showing how stupid I am by going through this project, but I'm not stupid enough to try this engine turning type process straight on the box straight off because I'd never used it before. So I've got a bit of a scrap bit of aluminium and I'm just going to see what the process looks like. It's a process of just putting circular marks on the aluminium that overlap. And when you do this, it looks like this. Well, that certainly worked. So, why not put it on the box? Nothing to lose. 
because at this stage that box was destined for the bin. People who do a proper job of this draw out a grid to follow, but I'm just freehanding it. I had to replace that scotch bright pad about three times to do the whole box. Okay, so I've put those swirls all over the box and I think it's actually made a bit of an improvement. In fact, I think it saved it from being put in the bin. The hinge is still ugly, but you know, what can you do? Lipstick on a pig. So the final step is just to put the loop for the latch onto the front of the box and the box will be finished. This has been a good learning experience, even though I'd have to class this as a failed project. I've learned a lot, and that engine turning bizzo is really looks quite neat, I think. I might use it again somewhere. And even though the box isn't going in the bin, it's not going anywhere but in the shed. I'll find some use for it. And it'll be a reminder that when it comes to shed projects, Failure is always an option.